Hi, today I'm going to show you how to create your own custom theme in the Resource Pack Hub plugin. So what this means is, kind of like how I have in my chat box here, I have my character, um, also in my inventory and up here near the, uh, the mini-map. And also I have this custom stats icon, we've got custom prayers, and then even we have a little like animation that plays whenever we click in the game. So there's a lot of things you can do with this Resource Pack Customs. So I'm going to show you how to do that kind of stuff. This will be completely from scratch as well. I'll even show you how to download the software that I'm going to be using to edit the pictures into your custom resource pack. So first things first, you're going to want your own image editing software. I suggest paint.net, it's free to use. You can also use GIMP, that's another free to use one. If you have other preferred ones like Clip Studio Paint or uh, Photoshop, you can use those as well. I already have this downloaded, but uh, here's the link and I'll also provide the link in the description of the video so you can go ahead and download it. So first we actually need to download the plugin itself if you don't have it already installed. It's called Resource Pack Hub. To be able to install it, you need to go to your um, plugins up here in RuneLight, click on the Plugin Hub icon, and you can just type in Resource, and then you'll see this Resource Packs. There will be an Install button here usually, and you can go ahead and click that and install it. So what you want to do is come to this site here. I'll uh, put this in the description of the video. This site hosts all the different um, custom resource packs that people have shared with others to use. Um, the one I use personally for my resource pack is this dark theme OSRS, but you can just kind of go through this and see which ones you like. Um, and if you see any elements from ones that you like, you can download them and it'll be easier to see kind of how they did those things. But uh, we'll just work with the dark OSRS pack for now. So you just click the download button here uh, and then you can save it to wherever you want. So I'm actually going to just save it real quick to this resource pack hub um, er or folder that I created on my desktop. You can just create a folder on your desktop wherever you want. It doesn't have to be on your desktop and just save it here. And then after it's saved, you're going to open up that folder. You'll just un or, uh, extract that here. And once that's extracted, you'll be able to see all the files that come inside of this custom resource pack. Alright, so first I'll just show you how to edit something simple like the chat box. All of these edits are very, very easy to do once you know what you're doing. So what you do is you'll just go into this chat box folder, and then here's all the different elements that you can modify. The one that I modified up here is called the background. This is where all the text goes. Um, so like any messages and stuff that are sent, this is what will, this is what's behind it. So what you want to do is you want to open this up in uh, your image editing program. I'm going to use uh, paint.net for this video because it's free to use and other people will have access to it. Normally I use Clip Studio Paint because I prefer it. We'll just open this up in our paint.net real quick. You can just drag the image onto here and then open as a new image. And then you'll see it in here. This is the chat box with everything in it. And it's really easy to add stuff from here. So what you want to do is go ahead and just add the image as well that you want into your background or images, plural, if you want more than one. And you can just drag that onto the screen. I'm going to add and then open it normally. I'm going to put, for example, Duradel in the background here. So what you want to do is come here, open up a new layer, go back to this copy, this background layer with control C. If you click control C here, it'll copy that and then paste it here. And it's going to ask you if you want to expand the canvas size or keep it normal. Keep the canvas size normal, otherwise it'll ruin your chat box pretty badly. <laughs> and what you can do is just kind of scale your image. If you hold shift while you're doing it, it'll keep the sizing of the image proper. That way it doesn't, you know, look scuffed whenever you convert it. So we just want our little Duradel here to be in the chat box. So I've called him Duradel this whole time. This is Vanica. Anyway. Now we need to lower the opacity on him, that way he doesn't blend with our words or cover anything up, basically. So I'll show you how to do that. So if you click this uh, properties button here on the second layer that you created, you can actually adjust the opacity. I suggest going pretty low is a good idea, otherwise your text will get covered up um, or be hard to read. So like if I put it at like a 50 here, and then we can just go to the save button. And then you want to save it as a PNG. It'll ask you if you want to overwrite, go ahead and click yes, and then click okay, and then flatten the image. And now you'll have your background. 
Okay, so now we want to test the changes that we just applied. So what you want to do is come back up here to the custom pack that you downloaded, uh, click beside the bar and then control C and this will copy it. So if you press control and then C on your keyboard and then you want to come over to your rune light. So if you come to your plugins here and click uh, the little plugin button, it'll pull it up. You can just type in resource and then click this uh, cog to configure it. It'll show you all the current resource packs that you have uh, put into your game. So right now I have the three put in. So one's my pack, one's some sample pack that I was working on for my friend. And this third one will be our new one. So now we have Duradel down here in our chat box. He's opaque enough that he's not covering anything up. So I used 50 opacity for this image. Um, your image might vary depending on how dark it is, but you can just mess around with it and come in here and keep testing until you get the result that you want. So what I've showed you so far can apply to basically any element of the custom pack. So if I want to change my inventory, you just need to look through the, the names of the folders. And once you find the folder you're looking for, you'll just go ahead and click that. So for example, if we want to modify the inventory, okay, there we go. So you want to go into the fixed or sorry, I personally use fixed mode. And if you use fixed mode yourself, you'll want to go into the fixed mode um, folder. And here you'll be able to modify what's around the uh, what's around the mini map here. This is going to be the background for your inventory. So, for example, this, this will be that right there. You can modify what's behind the buttons at the top as well. Um, and the, for the way, same way we made the chat box will exactly apply to this one. So if you wanted to add, for example, Duradel to here, you would just go through the exact same steps. So earlier I mentioned custom icons. For example, we have my custom uh, prayers and my custom stats. These are also pretty easy to modify. One thing you should know about the custom prayers is whenever you use them, they won't appear above your head in game. Runelight does not have this capability to be able to do that. So it only changes them in your inventory, unfortunately. Um, I still like to do it because I think it's cute. But if you want to do something like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the normal spellbook because that's the spellbook that I'm currently on. And for example, if we want to change this high alchemy, we can just drag this into our paint.net, open it up, and then go ahead and zoom in here. And then for example, what if I want to change the high alchemy to be, I don't know, red for some reason. And then we can just go ahead and make it red. And then you see how it's like a different color here. So you probably want to keep like continue matching that. So we'd want to do like, I don't know, a little darker of the red. There's a better way to do this by opening up uh, this extra menu here. So if you want to make that same red darker from before. Oops. And th there we go. We can just do something like that and apply it to the same pieces. And then if you want to copy the exact color you used before, just click this little dropper tool, click that, and you'll have it back. And now we have this red again. So we just continue painting this in. Hit Control S to save your image. Save. All right. And now we go back to our rune light. Open up the plugins again. Switch to our third tab. And boom, now you have the red high alchemy. So if you want to continue testing and you're not using multiple like I am, you can just close this resource pack and then turn it back on and it'll update all of your changes. And what I just showed you here with the spell also applies to any of the prayers here, any of the stats icons at the top. You'll just, you'll modify all of those in the exact same way. So anything that's a simple sprite is easy as just changing the color to something you want. If you want a completely different sprite that's a little more technical, um, you could take the sprite out and just replace it with something the exact same size. I don't personally do anything like that because a lot of it doesn't look very good unless you get custom art made. And also one important thing that I didn't mention, um, some packs don't actually include every folder for modifying every single element. So for example, you can modify the skill tabs. This resource pack OSRS dark that we've installed originally does not include the skill tab. So if you go to the plugin hub here, and uh, the creating your own resource pack uh, page, you can download the sample vanilla pack here. And inside this pack, we'll have literally every single folder. So now you see we have this skill folder here. 
which lets you modify every single skill icon, as well as some other things we didn't have access to before. So if you ever see a folder that doesn't, or you ever notice you don't have like a way to uh, modify one of the elements inside your pack, go to the sample vanilla pack. It'll have everything. Okay, so this next part's gonna have to do with whenever you click and you get uh, your little character or whatever you want, your little animated GIF moving right beside your click. I know a lot of people won't like stuff like this. This is going to be also more advanced. Uh, it's going to be a little bit harder to do, and we need an additional program to do this for the way I personally do it. I'm sure there's other ways you can do it as well. Um, but this is how I've taught myself how to do it. So what we do is we install this program. It's called fast1.org. This is an image viewing program. So if I come over here to my resource pack hub, I've put a GIF here and it'll open up. It'll open up my little emote and it's a it's just a two frame GIF. But what I need to do with this program is be able to click frame by frame and also save each individual frame. So for example, if I want to save this frame, I'll just call this Melty Rave 1 as a PNG. And then now we have this first frame of the GIF and then we can oops, open up the wrong thing. We can reopen the GIF here, click the pause button again. And you can just flip through your GIF, find the other frames. So I got the second frame here, and then we'll just save this as Melty Rave 2. So this is the the start of creating our um, click like on click little GIF that plays. So how I actually learned to do this is I opened up um, the Miku resource pack that was created by Happy. Thank you, Happy. You've done an amazing job. And a lot of my ideas were taken from this. So definitely check this one out if you're into Miku or anything like anime. Um, but inside this cross sprite folder, you can see I've actually modified it. But Happy has it so whenever you click, this little Miku will like uh, wave her leak up and down in the air. What you basically do is you go to your paint.net, open it back up, and you'll just drag in... For example, I just dragged in Happy's thing here. And now we can see this. And then I'll go back to my resource. We'll drag in the Melty Rave 1. Open that up. Okay, if you go down to Image and then Resize, you can change it to about roughly what you think this would be. I personally already know that uh, the 60 by 60 kind of worked the best for me. And then you copy it and then you can just paste it over here. And then literally just place it right in front. <laughs> um, what you do need to be worried about sometimes is these extra pixels. You see how they're like really opaque. Runelight and the resource plugin hub pack does not support transparency like this. So these will all appear full whenever you do that. So if you want to make it look really clean and fresh, I suggest using the eraser tool and just sit here and uh, delete these one by one and make sure there's nothing here. Okay, so at the top here, set the hardness to 100, anti-aliasing disabled, and the selection quality pixelated, and then set the brush width to 1, and that way whenever you click, you're just straight up deleting these tiles. So you can just go ahead and clean it up. I'm not personally going to sit here and do that because it takes a while to make it look really nice. Um, what you also want to do is delete any remnants, though. So you need to unselect what you currently have selected to edit outside of that. And we'll just erase this here. So now there's no more extra hanging out in the background. And then you just save. And then save it. And now we have our yellow frame one. We go back to where I had the Miku pack at. And we can see my little Melty here. So you just want to reapply this to all of these frames here. And that'll get you the result that you want. So I already had this done. But for each frame inside your GIF, you want to apply that to the like consecutive frame. So red frame two is where I'll put the second frame of my GIF. If your GIF has more than four frames, which is very, very common, depending on what you want to use, uh, just pick and choose frames that are going to still make it look coherent whenever you scale it down to the four frame size that you required. So what we're going to do is open our pack back up, go here to cross sprites, and then I will copy and paste all of the ones I had over here and just replace the files in the destination. And now, whenever I come back over here to the plugin packs, we select our third one. And now whenever I click on, so this is for the red click that we did, the red frame. Whenever I do something that requires an action, we get the little animation playing here in, uh, on the screen. 
So one thing you do need to watch out for is playing in different uh, display sizes. So for example, this change we made to the chat box, some of these things might not look the same depending on which client we use. So for example, this classic layout, resizable, is pretty ideal. Uh, you'll be able to change the background properly here. But if you, like, resizable modern, you can't um, adjust the background the same way as you would before, and I'll show you that. So if you go to the resizable mode, this little panel here, it's basically a small portion of your background, and whatever you put here will just be kind of repeated over and over and over. So, uh, for example, oops, I didn't mean to open that. We just drag this over to our paint.net, and I'll just copy, for example, this into that. Um, and then we save it. It's not going to look very good, and I'm going to show you why. And then we just refresh our plugin. So you can see this is kind of what it does. It's not the specifically the black thing, but the fact that it just repeats your image over and over and over, um, it ends up not looking very good. But with what I've showed you here today, you should be able to modify basically any little part of the client that you want. Um, you can even change like the emotes, the pictures that you have for your emotes here, or anything like that by just going into the emotes folder and adjusting the image. The biggest thing to make sure is to always scale down your images to the same size that's already being provided in the folder. And sometimes it'll make the images not look good. That's just a normal part of it because the file sizes or like the image sizes are so tiny for a lot of these icons. Um, it's hard to just directly replace like one to one a lot of these things. But uh, I appreciate you watching. Hopefully you learned something and this made a little bit of sense. <laughs> I know it can be a little bit confusing at first, but once you do it for a bit, it's super, super easy. It's very simple to make your own pack. Uh, and if you have any questions, just go ahead and leave a comment and I'll try to read them and uh, reply to anything. And uh, thank you for watching.